All right, welcome back, businesses. Today we're going to uh, combine our strategies of using a motion diagram and graphs so that we can describe motion for objects moving at a constant velocity. So again, to start, I'm gonna draw us a number line here and let's label uh, some points. Zero, one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm gonna add some positions. So at t equals zero, t equals one, and t equals two seconds. Uh, so uh, we know that on our motion diagram, we can draw displacement arrows that connect adjacent points on the, on the number line. Uh, adjacent by that, we mean between successive times. So zero to one, one to two. And I'll label them with how long they are as well. So from one to three, that is plus two meters. And from one to two, that is also plus two meters. I can add to my motion diagram the velocity. We saw that the velocity is the change in position divided by the time that it took. And to get the time that it took, I just look at the values of the times there. And I've set this up so that the change in time between each successive point is one second. So I can add a velocity vector. I'm going to draw it just below the number line for each of these three points. And I'll do two meters divided by one second. So each one of these is two meters per second long. Okay. So we are every second, we move two meters per second, two meters to the right every second that goes by. So one thing you'll notice is that the displacement and the velocity are parallel, and I'll use this fancy way to represent it. They point in the same direction. They have to point in the same direction. Time doesn't have a direction, and so they have to point in the same direction. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to turn this into a graph of position versus time. So let's draw ourselves an axis, okay? I've got x and I've got t. I've got zero seconds, one second, two seconds, three seconds, and I've got zero meters, one, two, three, four, and five. Next, I'll add my points. So I see at zero seconds, I'm located at one meter. Let's use a different color. At one second, I'm located at three meters. And at two seconds, I'm located at five. And of course, I can use, I can draw a line to connect them. Now, this line, we know that there is a relationship between uh, the velocity and information about this line. And we're also going to add a piece where we can think about how we are going to write the equation of this line. So we see that we have a straight line here. That means generally we have y equals m. Oops, sorry. We have y equals mx plus b. So we grab our y variable from the x from the vertical axis, we grab the slope uh, from, from our equation here. So we know that the slope should be equal to the velocity. My x variable is t, my horizontal variable. And our intercept, the way we want to interpret that is, what is the value of the x, or in this case, the vertical value, when the horizontal value is equal to zero. And we can write this in shorthand as x zero or x initial. We can use both interchangeably. 
So the next thing I would want to do is not just in general the equation, but specifically for the line that we have made. So I get x equals 2 meters per second times the time plus 1 meter. And again, where do we get these numbers from? So we get the variable x from the vertical. We get the variable t from the horizontal. We get the velocity by figuring out the slope. And we got the y-intercept by reading off the value when t equals 0. The other graph that I can make is not only might I want to know the velocity as, I'm sorry, the position as a function of time, but of course I might also want to know the velocity as a function of time. So again, I'll still label some points, 0, 1, 2, 3 seconds, and let's label 1 meter per second and 2 meters per second. And what I notice is that the Velocity at all values of time is equal to 2. 2 meters per second at 0 seconds, 2 at 1, 2 at 2, 2 at 3, so on and so forth. And so if we wanted to write this as a equation, I don't have to include, if I start with y equals mx plus b, the slope is 0, so you get y equals b. B would be the vertical variable at t equals 0, which in the same way we can write in shorthand as v0 or v initial. So I have this equation that v as a function of time is v initial. For our specific example, v as a function of t is 2 2 meters per second. And again, where does that value come from? It's coming from that slope we initially calculated. Right? And so these two graphs represent what we would call an object moving at constant velocity. And you can see that constant coming in in the velocity versus time graph. Thanks for watching.